In this problem, we're told a box is given a push so that it slides across the floor. How far will it go, given that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.15 and the push imparts an initial speed of 3.5 meters per second? So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So we have this box, and we know it's going to be sliding across this floor, right? So here's our floor. So our box, so it's going to be moving across this floor. So what do we know about the box? We know it's going to have some mass m. And so what are the different forces acting on the box? That's the first thing that we want to label. So we know we have the, the weight force, right? It's going to be going straight down, right? Which is just going to be the mass times the gravity. And we also know it's going to have a normal force acting upwards, right? Perpendicular to uh, the surface it's on. So it's going to go straight up. And we just call this F sub n. And then what else do we know? We know it's going to have some force of friction, right? And so we're assuming it's moving this way, right? So the force of friction is going to go in the opposite direction, right? Because I like to imagine it's just another force that making it harder for it to move in the direction it's trying to go. So it goes this way. So that's going to be that. Let's write down what we're told. So given, what are we given? So we know that the coefficient of kinetic friction, right, which we call mu sub k, is going to be equal to 0.15. So 0.15 for that. And we know it's going to impart an initial speed of 3.5 meters per second. So we know the initial velocity, right? It's starting at this, right? Initial speed, 3.5 meters per second. So now that we've got this drawn, what we want to do is we're going to be solving this formula. The force of friction is equal to mu sub k times f sub n. So essentially what we're going to do is plug in mu sub k, plug in something for f sub n, and plug in something for the force of friction. And the way we do that is by finding the sum of the forces in each direction. So some of the forces in the y direction and the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to ma, right? So we know force equals ma, and so it's going to be moving uh, at this, right? So ma, but in the y direction, it's going to be equal to zero. And the reason that is is because we're not moving in the y direction, we're moving along one point. So if we're not moving in that direction, the acceleration in it is going to be zero, right? So equals zero. So now what we want to do is write the sum of the forces, like what are they? So let's start with the y direction. So what are the different forces in the y direction? So if it's going upward, you want to keep it positive in our equation. If it's going downward, it's negative. So in the y direction, we have f sub n. So it's going up, so it's positive. And then this one's going down mg, the weight force. So it's negative. So what you should notice here is that f sub n, if we add mg to both sides, we're going to get f sub n equals mg. So that's that. Let's do this one here now. So in the x direction, what do we have? So it's going to be equal to... Uh, the forces, right? We only have one force, the force of friction. And so we know it's going to the left, right? So left is negative, right is positive. So it's going to be minus F sub F. And so we just want the force of friction to be by, uh, by itself. So I'm just going to or multiply both sides by negative one. So it's going to be equal to minus MA. And so now we've got both of these. What we can do is plug them into this equation. So the force of friction minus MA is equal to mu sub K, which is 0.15 times f sub n. And so we know f sub n is mg. And so what you should notice here is that uh, our m will cancel, right, both m's, and then we just get minus a equals 0.15 g. And so what we want to do is multiply both sides by minus 1 to get rid of the minus on the a. So it's going to be minus 0.15 times g. And so we know g is just the force of grav or just gravity, right, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So a minus 0.15 times 9.8, you're going to get minus 1.47. And so minus 1.47 meters per second squared, right? Because it's acceleration meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. And now what you want to do is think about it as a kinematic equation. So we're trying to find how far it will go. So let's write down our given here. What are we given? We have the acceleration from this problem, right? A equals minus 1.47 meters per second squared. We know its initial speed, v sub 0, is going to be 3.5 meters per second. And then what else do we know? We know that we're going to how far will it go, right? So at some point, it's going to stop. So we're just going to say the final velocity is equal to 0 meters per second, right? We're seeing how far it will go without until it stops. So now we know this. And so what we're going to do is just go ahead and solve it like a kinematic equation. And so the formula we're going to use is uh, and so keep in mind we're solving for delta x, right? We're trying to find how far it will go, so a distance. 
so delta x. So the equation we're going to use is v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. So we're solving for delta x. We have a, we have v sub 0, and we have v. So all we have to do is plug it in. So v is 0, so 0 squared is just 0, which equals v sub 0 squared, 3.5 squared, plus 2 times a, which is minus 1.47 times delta x. So what we want to do is uh, solve for delta x, so minus this to get it to the other side. Minus 3.5 squared is equal to 2 times minus 1.47, which is going to be minus 2.94. So minus 2.94 times delta x, get delta x by itself, divide both sides by minus 2.94. So delta x is going to be equal to minus, and then 3.5 squared over minus 2.8, or 2.94. So if you plug that in your calculator, delta x will be equal to 4.166. Here, actually, let me check. So 3.5 squared, divide that by 2.94. Yeah, so it's going to be 4.666, so on. Uh, you can round it however you want, but... 4.66 meters. I'm going to leave it at that. So the distance it's going to travel, right? So how far will it go? Uh, it's going to travel 4.166 meters. And so that's going to be your answer to this problem. And hopefully you found it useful.